Hello, I'm Reza Sharifzada, a security analyst and specialist in this field. In this video, I'm going to talk about a vulnerability that, if not the most impressive one you've ever seen in your life, I can promise you it'll be among the top three vulnerabilities you'll ever encounter. In this video, we're going to dive into how I managed to get into the infrastructure of one of the top five companies in the world in the tech and IT sector, gaining access to over a hundred of their internal sites, being able to control them, extract information, make changes, or even take them offline. All right, to start off, let me introduce myself. Who am I? Obviously, if you're watching this video, you probably know, but it's something that needs to be explained. We're going to talk about what happened, how I managed to gain this access, and the attack itself. Some parts of the video might be a bit heavy for you, and that's totally normal. We're dealing with some serious stuff here. We're talking about an issue that probably had more than 10,000 orders processed on it. So naturally, the attack that happened to it is also related to that. This attack happened just in the past month or two. Where exactly did it occur and what did it target? Guys, the title of the attack is that there was a vulnerability in the SSO section and during registration, we were able to change and escalate the user's privileges. This is called privilege escalation. This term is very common and widely used, especially in red teaming. We have initial access and we can generate a simple user. Now we escalate this user to a higher level. So how does the company's SSO flow work? Pay attention to this. Whenever I want to mention the company's name, I'll use the word target instead. So let's assume the company we're talking about is called target. Naturally, if you follow the page, you can probably guess that the company's name is used for your email. An OTP comes in and asks you to verify your email. Okay, you enter the OTP. Guys, you enter the information correctly, your own email, name, surname, and then the OTP. After you enter the OTP, the next step is that you need to check what the user type is. This is a crucial step and a turning point. Let me share a practical trick with you here. You can become a better hacker when you are the turning point in a flow. What does that mean? It means that this flow probably has an issue here. Probably, if I can bypass this part of the flow, I can reach this vulnerability. Let me say, sometimes people ask me, how is it that when you know about a target, you can hit it so quickly? I understand the turning points really well. This is one point you need to understand and keep in mind. A lot of people get stuck here. They get stuck at the email verification part with the OTP code and all that. They try to bypass the verification. Okay, so you bypassed it. What's supposed to happen next? What are you supposed to do at this checkpoint? So our turning point here is that in this user type, in my opinion, naturally the email verification with OTP should be there. I've tested this part a lot and it's been tested a lot, but the tests for this section have more scenarios and my turning point is when Reza Sharifzada, my acceptance point is also when Reza Sharifzada. It's where, when I'm more focused and in control, I tend to look for more complexity and steer the work toward that desired complexity. So is there an interior user type here? What does that mean? It means there are four buttons for sections and we click on them. So what about my own user type? It's more in the our users section or for kids. There was also a business user here. So there was a setup like this, meaning it became a business user and a personal user. If I relate it to myself, naturally this part is more attractive to me. In other words, all of it is Without exception, you all click on this part and hope that your user becomes an internal user or a business user. I did the same thing as all of you. First, I selected the first section and expected my user to become business or internal. But naturally, a company this big doesn't just do that. And instead, I get a message saying that our internal admins will check the user. They say they'll review your request and if everything is okay, 
they'll approve it. Guys, it's obvious that this request will be rejected. Why? Because my email was from hotmail.com, my information was obviously fake, and other things like that, and verifying it isn't something that happens in an hour. So what did I look at next? I looked at this section where I'm creating a user type. Meaning, I requested that an admin or maybe an owner or internal user type be created for my email. So naturally, if it gets rejected, what happens then? Well, in my opinion, let's see what happens from Reza Sharifzadeh's perspective. If I first click on None, and then hit the Back button, the Browser's Back button, and then come and click on Our Users or Business User. Guys, when they say Out of the Box, think about it. That's exactly what I mean when I first click on Business User. First of all, a create action is happening for the account. Now, let's say I went and started creating this account. First, I clicked on None, then I hit the Back button, and then I clicked on Business User. Pay close attention. When I clicked on None, what happened was I saw a request being sent from my side. A request was going out, and it was sent to a certain path. After the request was sent, I hit the Back button in my browser, and then what did I do? I went back to that first step and clicked on Business User again. Notice the difference compared to the first scenario. In the first scenario, it went straight to Business User. In the second scenario, the None request was sent first. Then I sent the Business User request. Why? Because in the second scenario, the update function is called and sometimes the update function might differ from the create function. Regarding restriction or prevention, it's more significant. Was this the first step you needed? Basically, could you do it? This was the step to reach it. Now, what was the next step? After I sent the company user, it sent me on to a path where I would then enter my information, my mobile number, my address, and, well, that mobile number. I entered the address and the response came back empty. It's like all the work I did was pointless. Remember that. Whenever you get an empty response or an unexpected response, find out the reason. I sent the request related to my information. I saw that such a request was being sent from my side. That is, after I entered the business user path and entered my information. This request was being sent from my side and its response came back null and empty. What did I do? I thought, well, this is probably being generated based on the email, so since I was sending a fake request, I changed it. I changed adsign.com to adsigntarget, and what happened was that in the JSON return to me, there was a registration ID or some other information. In the previous state, it was empty. In the second state, there was a registration ID. So what did I do next? In the browser, I repeated the same process again. I entered my information in the business mail section, entered the business user, intercepted my request, and changed my email. The interesting thing is, after I did this, another request was sent. Exactly in the previous states, this request wasn't sent, right? What was the request? It had a mechanism like this. Guys, what's the story here? Do you get it? What do you have? I'm entering this set of information. This information is supposed to tell the company that I'm your user, and now in one of the requests, the company wants to check. Now, which branch am I a user of, and which department am I from? Here's the key point. This request job was just that, after I came and changed it in the intercept. It happened to adsigntarget.com. A request from my browser included my email and user ID. What does that mean? Was it trying to verify my branch or what I belong to? Did it have my branch? This request wasn't from me. So what happened next? Then I thought, what if I change my email? I tried something from signtarget.com and saw that again. An empty response was returned. That's normal. Why? 
because it's checking the user ID with the email. What idea would come to your mind? Pause the video, think about it, and please don't watch the rest yet. The point is that I should try to fuzz the user ID. But when you fuzz the user ID, this user ID is being matched. With the email, naturally, there isn't an email like that, especially not my personal email. At SignTarget.com doesn't exist, so it can't be matched with any specific user ID. So what should you do in this case? What did I do? First, I connected to Target.com. I tried it, but I didn't get a result. Then I thought, okay, this email is being checked against that user ID. So what should you do? Take the email name and value from the video, leave the target.com part empty in the email, and match it with the user ID. I thought that maybe the developer might respond to me based on regex. Guys, let me share a trick with you right now. What did I figure out myself? I went to the part that's related to... Let me tell you about it later, this first thing needs to be set up. I had seen this before, actually. I'd seen it in one of the projects as well. There was a project where the user information was returned based on email. For example, when my email was admin-admin-test.com, I would delete the admin part. I would just leave admin-test.com, and I had the same idea here as well. Basically, set the target there and let the user ID be phased in. One of the numbers, the information for one of the users, return details like branch, position, and more. What did I do? I thought, okay, if I go back to the previous step and complete my information, complete my details. In step six, I could complete my information or change my email in the request to what I mentioned before. For example, let's say the personal email is hadsani at target.com. Then in the second request, I come and replace it. The second step is when it's making the request. If I substitute it somewhere, something happens. In the final response, it comes back and says, okay, this is the user's show, their role, and other details. It should be in the response. The last request would go back to the web application, and based on that, the web application would send an encrypted request. It would ask, okay, what information does this user have? And in the end, I went through all these steps from the beginning. My browser's intercept was on, Burp Suite was running, and I went through it step by step. I made the changes for you line by line, step by step, and in the end, the message came up for me saying that we want to advertise to you. Has your user been registered? Guys, after I used my own email, that means all these changes, remember, were applied to this account. They were being applied to this account, but I was making request after request. At the time when, guys, I logged in with this account and gained access to more than 100 internal levels. This attack is a combination of three to five different attacks. Of course, later on I found other different tricks to repeat it, which I can share in future videos if you support this one. It was a really, really complex attack. Let me just say that 27 comments were exchanged between me, the main bug triager, and that company, six different bug triagers reviewed the bug. They reviewed it thoroughly three times over. It was something really strange, and I tried to share it with you in this video. The impact of this vulnerability was huge. The CVSS score was 10 out of 10, to the point that I could have had access that would allow me to take certain things offline. Thanks for everything, and the scope change was really bizarre. I hope you enjoyed it. Some points from this video. What I hope you take away is to always remember, if you're creating something somewhere, or even just updating it, the opposite point, or even the parallel point, I can say. For example, if you're updating information during a create, test it as well. Are you creating the information? When you're updating, Test that too. Always keep in mind that big companies, just because of their name, might have certain rules for you. That's why I used AdSignTarget, because of the flow of attacks. If you've made it this far, 
I'd really appreciate it if you leave me a comment and definitely, definitely hit that bell so you'll get notified about the next video. We've got a lot of cool programs coming up and there's a really exciting point. I'll tell you soon, I'm going to make a few tutorials like this one for you in video format. What does that mean? This is our own thing that's going to become a demo, right? Naturally, it'll be on YouTube in a seminar and a webinar that's being organized by our friends and we're planning to have a really strong collaboration. I'm giving you the heads up now so you can be ready. Definitely, definitely remember to subscribe and if you liked it, share the channel with your friends. See you in the next video.